Pasadena ISD. Complex school finance made simple, or at least as simple as it can be. School districts have two types of funds, M&O and INS. INS is the interest and sinking part of school funds that districts get by bond elections. INS pays for such items as new schools, renovation, and technology. By law, INS funds cannot be used to pay for the daily operations of a school district, including salaries and utilities. M&O stands for Maintenance and Operations. This portion of a school district's budget pays for salaries and the daily operations of the district. M&O comes from local, state, and federal sources. It is the M&O portion of school funding that districts across Texas are now concerned with because of actions by the state legislature. In the spring of 2006, the Texas state legislature passed House Bill 1 in an attempt to reduce property taxes and equalize state funding to all districts. The bill required each school district to lower its local tax rate by one-third and increased state aid to make up the difference. This reduction was good for taxpayers in the short run because in Pasadena ISD, it lowered our tax rate to $1.07. However, House Bill 1 capped the total of local and state funding for schools at the 2006 level per student. This means that in future years, if property values continue to go up, the school district won't get more money because even though property taxes generate more money for the district, the state will pay less. The funding will never be higher per student than the district received in 2006. An even more challenging piece of this story is that different school districts receive different amounts per student. Under House Bill 1, Pasadena ISD received $5,177 per student. If we received as much funding as Barbers Hill per student at $7,343, we would receive $136.5 million more every year You know that inflation is affecting everyone. Utilities such as electricity have increased, gasoline prices have skyrocketed, and insurance costs, especially after Hurricane Ike, have increased significantly. For all school districts, including Pasadena ISD, payroll is the largest budget expense. 85.5% because people working directly with students makes the biggest positive impact on students' lives. The largest portion of the payroll goes for salaries of teachers and support staff who have daily interaction with our students. Of the remaining 14.5%, the non-payroll portion, 24.2 million, or 44%, is spent on utilities, insurance, and transportation. Costs, such as utilities, transportation, salaries, and insurance, are continuing to rise but our revenue is the same as it was in 2006. Three years ago, we cut $30 million from areas that were not benefiting students as they should and reallocated those funds into areas that focused on our district's mission. These cuts mean that Pasadena ISD is operating a very lean budget. We can't keep on operating forever when expenses are rising faster than revenue. So now what? Pasadena ISD does have a fund balance, which is like a savings account. But school districts are required by the state to maintain enough money in fund balance to cover two months of operational cost. In addition, there isn't enough in fund balance to cover long-term reductions in funding. We know that the cuts we have made so far have impacted our students, staff, and programs. But if Pasadena ISD is forced to make even deeper financial cuts, services to students will be reduced or eliminated entirely. These cuts will hurt our students and our community. This financial problem is not just a short-term challenge. Fundamental changes must be made at the state level to make certain that the education of students is not affected. This is the challenge faced by all school districts in the state, including Pasadena ISD. Unless we get help from the state legislature, our students will be the ones to suffer.